welcome to Classic Car Cave. Um, I just wanted to put up this quick video because I have passed this information on to uh, to other people, and I want to kind of put it up as a bit of a warning. Um, I was watching uh, Jagvet One, which is Gary Meese, who's a friend of mine, English friend of mine, who lives in Arizona, and I can't remember 100% whether I actually put him on to the guy that was making these. Unfortunately, Lionel was his name, and he's retired now. But I do believe there's another company, I think it's Moss or somebody now has started to recreate it. But it's something to watch out for. So in his video, which I'll put a little clip of it up if I can, it, I'll record it off the, the screen if I can't actually pick it up and, and put it in separately. Um, and what's happened is it's marked the, the ears on the spinner. So it's really about this tool. So this is the, this is the tool that he was producing. Now I've been using it for some period of time and um, I've not had any issues with it but I do remember Lionel saying, you know, asking me about certain dimensions and certain measurements. Now whether one tool is different from another, I guess it must be so he wouldn't have asked for that but that's neither here nor there. The, the point that Gary's making is, is that um, I'm sure what, we, what I can do with this and after you see the video you'll see what I'm talking about but I think we can actually chamfer this aluminium edge which will stop it biting. So this is a brand new spinner and what's happened is, is the ears have been marked across here and here. Tighten these up with a, with a hide hammer or a copper hammer. They, they do get damaged and, and the ears could get really quite sharp and stuff and they look awful. So this tool I thought was, was, was the way to go. Um, but if there is an issue I'd like people to know about it. But so, so when, it, when, when it's put on um, you can see that it's actually sitting against that and you'll see this in the video but when you when you pull it back when you pull it back or when you tighten against itself and pull it back you know so it means you have to really center this before you before you put any pressure on it otherwise it's going to dig in um, but what I think it really is to just chamfer the edge of this and possibly put some some kind of thin rubber in there so that it does already have a standoff and it can't bite in. But I will, what I'm going to do is chamfer this down and I would suggest you do the same if you have this. So I'll show you the video and I'll try and put Gary's small piece into it to show where the marks are on it. And hopefully this will help somebody out that's, that's got one of these tools. So this is, this is one of these. There you go. Oh, uh, one other thing, really, this is probably purely for Dave rather than anybody else. Um, I purchased this uh, spinner removal tool, and it's great, it fits. Unfortunately, it has a sharp edge on it, and it has damaged my brand new spinners. So I might have to buy one brand new spinner because that's ugly, that pisses me off. These edges should have been rounded by the guy that built them. Um, I don't know if I'm going to bother telling him because uh, I simply put, I don't know if he's making any more of these. But the, those edges are sharp and they damage the spinner and I'm not happy. Of course I'm not happy. It's... It's what happens. So this is one of these wheel spinner tools um, that, I, that I wanted to show you. So you can see this one's pretty dog-eared. You can see it's been, it's really sharp as well. It's been hit with possibly a copper hammer or maybe even a, a metal hammer which has splayed it like that. Um, it's not so bad on, on these cars or the Mark IIs, but on the E-Type particularly, it's very difficult to tighten them up with a hammer. Um, because of the uh, the arches, the, the, the wheels are quite in and you'd be very worried about actually hitting the paintwork. But you can see here, um, I think this is a 48 mil, I think, or something like that. I can't remember exactly now. Um, sorry, 38, is it? Says it there. 38 mil, okay, or inch and a half socket. Um, so the guy that used to make these, unfortunately, they're not available anymore because I think there is other companies making them now. I, I think uh, somebody picked up the design and and started making them because Lionel retired. He was an ex-engineer and he made them. And I think he did, did them for £49, which is unbelievable. But you can see quite clearly there that that is actually sitting on the side where Gary is, is having problems where he, where he caught it there. 
Um, but if you bring it back, you can see there is a gap on them. I mean, I, I, the only thing I can think is possibly put some tape or cloth on the inside of those before you do it, before you tie them up, which does seem a bit over the top, but it might be a way of protecting the ears. Um, and obviously you have to be very central when you put them on. And it's the same here. You can see that side, there isn't a gap. It is actually still, so if you turned on it, I mean, theoretically, all the weight should be there. And then coming up here, as you're turning it off or on, or the other way around, like this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think what he was saying about the, stock, the sides of these, I have two of them here. I have one for my E-Type and one for my XK. And possibly what I might do is just chamfer off those edges there, like he, like he mentioned, which would probably make, make sense, and it wouldn't affect the tool hardly. So I'm gonna chamfer those edges off to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, but it's a very effective tool. I've not had any damage with mine. Uh, I think it depends on how you put it on and how you use it, or, or, I don't know. But maybe, as I said, this, this is another one. This is, a, this is a brand new one here. It's a bit, it's a bit manky because I put my hands on it. This is an old one. Um, and this one's not as dog-eared as you normally get them, but the ones on the car are terrible. So this is a new one, and you can see even there, move this stuff out of the way you can see there because it's got nothing to go against it would actually sit but when you pull it back there is a gap there i'll turn it around the other way so you, can so you can see when you put it on there is a gap um so i think some kind of uh cushioning in there might be the way to go um i don't know but i will take the, i will take the, the, i think that's what i'm going to do i'm going to chamfer off these edges I don't see any marks on them where I've used it, but you know, um, it is a good tool. And it's unfortunate that Gary's had his, uh, his the ears damaged on his, but still, I still think using a, a hammer, um, you're never going to get the power you would get with a 38 mil socket and a and a, and a breaker bar or or a, or a long wrench. That's for sure. But um, they do tighten up as as you're breaking. These these tighten up under breaking power uh, not not acceleration which is where i made a big mistake years ago i thought that's what i thought that it's moving forward all the time 99.9 percent of the time so they must tighten up going forward that's not the case but it's the braking power is much greater than acceleration power and that's what tightens them anyway um yeah so it is what it is so at least we're, i'm aware of it now and i hope the other people have watched gary's and this video now, this update, Gary put up one yesterday, which is a Jag Vet 1. <clears throat> and, he, and he found this problem, he had a little score mark um, across there, which, uh, yeah, was a real shame, because these are not cheap, these things. Anyway, hope that's a tip to somebody. What I, what I will do now is I will definitely chamfer off all these edges. They're aluminium, very easy to do. I'll chamfer the edges off, and then I might even um, stick... Um, some rubber here in between um, to to uh, stop it doing that and it should still go on. It might even make it a little bit tighter to go on. And I don't know, Gary, if you think that's maybe a way of, of making it better. And I'm sorry that uh, um, you know, you've had that problem, but I'm sure there's a way around it. It's, I still think it's a good tool, just needs to be used in a very um, careful way, I guess. It wasn't something I thought about, but uh, hopefully that's of some use to people who have got this and have found they had the same problem. It's never marked any on my E-Type, um, and I've changed the wheels quite a lot, um, but I have been particularly careful to pull it forward before I started to wrench on it, so maybe that's the key.